Hello and welcome to the Sound of Science, the place where we deconstruct unscientific reasoning. Please consider to like and subscribe if you support science. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to break down another episode of the Atheist Experience, and this time the topic at hand is believing things based upon faith. So, let me first explain what I think faith is. So, imagine that one day I would come to you and I would tell you that tomorrow a grey wizard by the name of Gandalf will visit you in order to collect a magic ring that has the power to destroy the planet. Perhaps you would then ask me if there is any evidence to support that belief. And then of course I would tell you that I believe that because it's written in scripture. And then perhaps you would be confused, asking me how I would know that that scripture is true. And then of course I would tell you that it's true because it's the word of Tolkien. And then perhaps you would say, well, I don't know if that scripture of yours is a good reason to believe that this wizard will visit me tomorrow. Don't you have anything else that might convince me about this grey wizard? And then I would say, well, of course, there is faith. You know, you could believe about the wizard based upon faith. So that, in a nutshell, is how the concept of faith has been presented to me throughout my life. Every time when I see a person taking a position based upon faith, it's because all the other good and all the other bad reasons already have been dismissed. You see, if there was sufficient evidence to believe something, you would believe it based upon that evidence. If there wasn't sufficient evidence, but there were at least some vague clues and uncertain speculations about something, you could at least try to believe something based upon that. But if there are even no bad reasons available to believe something, then some people resort to the bottom tier of belief justifications, and that is faith. The most prominent advantage of faith is that it doesn't need any evidence, any reason, any example or any explanation. Because faith basically doesn't mean anything. Faith is just believing something because you believe it. And based upon faith I could claim the existence of anything. So it's a total mystery to me why some people would bring this about in any discussion. The concept of faith really doesn't bear any relevance to anything. Having clarified all of that, let's see how faith will play out for Carl from Oklahoma. So why do you believe? Well, number one, it starts with faith. And two... Why would you, why would you believe ways, anything? I, we're, we're done at number one. We're done at number one. Why would you believe yeah, anything? Faith is a good way to be wrong. Is there any is there <laughs> any position <laughs> is there any position yeah. that that I couldn't take based on faith? Well, Carl is not off to a good start here. When asked why he believes in his God, his answer is it starts with faith, and that of course doesn't mean anything. So a perfect response by Matt and Don. And I would amplify that question of Matt Delahunty to any Christians out there who are watching this video. Please tell me, is there any position that I cannot take based upon faith? Couldn't, is there any position that you could that you could not take based on faith? Right. If you begin with faith, couldn't I believe all those gods you just dismissed, or couldn't I pick one of those gods you dismissed and believe it based on faith as a as a primary foundation? You could, yeah. Sure. Now, this is a very special moment because this is where Carl actually is honest. Based upon faith, you could believe in any god or in anything whatsoever. And Carl admits that that is true. Now, accepting reality in itself is not so special for a caller in the atheist experience. It has happened before. But the special thing for Carl is that this is the last time he will be honest and accept reality. So doesn't that mean that faith is not a good foundation for determining what's true or not true? Not so. It, okay, it's, that so. That's not what it means? So faith faith can be used to both believe a true thing and a not true thing. And you yeah. think that this doesn't demonstrate that faith is an unreliable path to truth? Well, the Bible says that faith pleases God. I, I, and uh, Jesus said to I, Thomas... I, I asked Thomas a different question. Jesus, I asked. I don't know why you're going to the Bible at all. 
So this unfortunately is where dishonesty kicks in. Matt just explained that based upon faith, you could take any possible position and Carl agreed with that. So the consequence is that you can take both true and untrue positions based upon faith. And that in itself shows that faith is not a reliable pathway to truth. Confronted with this, Carl is silent for a few seconds. This is where he realizes that if he is honest, he simply should agree with Matt. But then unfortunately, he starts to babble irrelevant nonsense. That is no answer to the question. And if your method, your primary method of faith, can lead you both to something that is true and something that's not true, then doesn't that mean that faith is an unreliable path to truth? Uh, no. <sighs> this is so blatantly dishonest that I seriously don't get why Matt didn't hang up here. There was more than enough reason for it at this point in the discussion. Because now that Carl again is confronted with the fact that you can take both true and untrue positions based upon faith, he simply has to admit that faith is not a reliable path to truth. But if he does that, a fundamental part of his belief system will collapse. And it seems that Carl is not prepared to admit that, regardless of the truth. I, I don't Why? understand. If, if, if I can flip a coin to make a decision and it can lead me to the correct decision and an incorrect decision, doesn't that mean that flipping a coin is an unreliable path to the correct decision? Okay, so... That was a yes or no if question. You, if you turn your phone... That on, was a yes or no question. Okay, what was the question again? This really is one of those moments in the atheist experience that shows how Matt can have a boatload of patience with his callers. To me, looking back at this clip, Carl is obviously not interested anymore in a serious conversation. He knows he has painted himself into a corner. And you know, sometimes in a debate, you have to admit your opponent is right. And this was that moment for Carl, but he doesn't do that. He seems to act as if he disagrees with Matt, but that is not the case in reality. Carl already knows there is no way out. Note that Carl doesn't even try to contribute arguments to the debate anymore. He's now just denying truth and trying to buy some time by pretending he doesn't remember the question. Let's say there's a thousand different proposed gods and only one of them's real. And we can use faith to get to any of them. Then you've got a one in a thousand shot which is way worse than a coin toss, of getting the correct position yeah. based on faith, right? But there's tens of thousands yeah. of gods. So oh, yeah. now does that demonstrate that faith is not a reliable path to truth? Well, there's also proof. This is such a crystal clear and most frustrating sign of dishonesty, dodging simple yes or no questions and instead moving the goalpost to the next debate issue that you're going to lose as well. Come on, Matt, hang up on him. Is faith a reliable path to truth? That was a question for you. Is faith the reliable path to truth? I didn't say the, I said a, but I'll go with either one. Okay, uh, not always. Well, okay, do you, know, do you understand what not always means? Sometimes, and sometimes it does. So yeah. therefore, it's not reliable, How? right? So then it's not reliable, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Next. Somet sometimes we got to parse the sentences here. Jesus. <laughs> oh, wow. This is a very skilled deconstruction by Matt and Don. And the thing is, this should basically be the definite discussion about the concept of faith. There is not much more to say about it when it's logically shown not to be any reliable pathway to truth. Hey, l listen to me though, listen to me though. If, if you turn on your phone. Uh, my phone's on. It turns on. Okay, but why do you think the phone will turn on though? So, Carl will now resort to irrelevant comparisons that don't make any sense. What Carl wants to get out of this is that expecting your phone to switch on if you push the power button it is something you take on faith. No, you fool. You don't take that on faith. You take that based upon the fact that you tested it a thousand times. If you push that button a thousand times, the phone will switch on 99% of the time. 
our expectation about that has got nothing to do with faith. Okay, but why do you think the phone will turn on though? Why because I, it did the last 10 million times you turned it on. Yeah, um, yeah so but how do you know for sure it's going to turn you on? You don't know for sure. You don't know anything for sure. I can demonstrate that my phone turns on at least once. I can demonstrate that it turns mm -hmm. on repeatedly. I can put together a probabilistic assessment of my phone. Can we do any such thing for God? You, you're you comparing natural things with supernatural things. No, so I asked together. a question. Can I do any such thing for God? See how Carl's reasoning is totally flawed. First, he himself introduced the comparison of using faith to believe in God with switching on a phone. And then he tells Matt and Don that you can't make such a comparison. You, you're you comparing natural things with supernatural things. No, so I asked together. a question. Can I do any such thing for God? What was the question again? This guy doesn't know any shame in applying tricks to sabotage the debate. Again, he pretends not to hear or understand the question. The amount of patience Matt and Don are putting into this is almost painful to watch. Yet again, they are giving Carl another chance to rethink his position. So is faith a reliable pathway to truth? Uh, to some, no. But to, to <laughs> others, yes. Why, why are we hedging here? So okay. faith, faith can sometimes Correct. lead you to Correct. truth. Correct. And faith Correct. can sometimes lead you to something that's not true. Yes. Which means that faith is not a reliable path to truth, right? Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for Matt Delahunty switching to beast mode. You can't just roll faith out like that, though. The Bruh. You can't. <laughs> you presented an argument and I answered questions. There's a difference. No, I presented a response to your argument and you dodged the answer over and over until I held your feet to the fire. I'm sorry that logic demolishes your position, but that's not our problem. And now, Carl goes to one of the last lines of defense of an intellectually demolished position. He is going to play victim. Any one-sided argument sounds good if it's one-sided. I haven't got to speak yet. <laughs> oh! You're wrong. Any one-sided argument doesn't sound good. You presented a one-sided argument and we demolished it. So, Carl even fails at playing victim, perfectly explained by Matt Delahunty. Then there is only one option left for Carl. Carl is right, and Matt and Don just don't see it. And here's the thing. You called us, and mm -hmm. you believe. And you begin with a belief yeah. based on faith. And you acknowledge yeah. that faith isn't a path to truth. And you acknowledge that we haven't demonstrated that a God believed. And when asked what reason you have for believing it, you go back to faith. Do you not see the problem there? Uh, I see the problem with your understanding. Matt, Don, I'm not religious myself, but in the sweet Lord's name, please finish this agony. This is the point where even I feel pity for other Christians because this dishonest fool is representing their religion. You said you, you see my failure in understanding and I asked you what that was. And you begin with, if I pray and I don't get an answer, should I be discouraged? How is that in any way an explanation of what I don't understand? Yeah. That's what I thought. Thanks, Carl. So many times, the atheist experience is criticized for having conversations with some of the worst representatives of the Christian belief. And of course, Carl is a rather clear example of that. But the point is that Matt and Don are not calling people to bring their atheist viewpoints to the kitchen table of strangers. It's the other way around. Matt and Don have an open telephone line in this show, and anyone who wants to talk about his or her belief in a god can call in. And if those callers in many cases turn out to be people who either just don't get their story straight, didn't do their homework, or who are blatantly dishonest, that should be food for thought for the Christian community. I can't imagine they want to be represented by those people. 
if there are any people available within the Christian community who did their homework much better than the regular callers of the show and who have the right open and honest mindset that is needed to engage in a religious debate that is characterized by integrity and honesty. Well, in that case, they are free to call in any time. Why don't they do this? Well, I think the answer lies in the fact that even the professional Christian apologists, they offer the exact same flawed arguments and examples as their less gifted minions do. But I'm an optimist and I will keep listening to and waiting for better explanations why people believe in a God. For now, thank you for watching and I'll see you at the next video.